What I really don't understand, guys, is this narrative that the Colts played so well this weekend with their backs against the wall. Their backs weren't against the wall. Their backs were against the wall the week before when Brock Osweiler and the 6-6 six and six Houston Texans came to our building in a battle for sole possession of first place and beat us at home at Lucas Oil Stadium when the fans booed the team off the field like five different times. Our backs were against the wall in that game. And we didn't show up in that game. Because we really did play good against Minnesota. I don't want to take that away from Pagano or the team. You know, they did play well. They ran the football. They protected the quarterback. They got off the field on third down. They caused turnovers. They got after the quarterback on defense. I mean, they played a really good football game. But their backs weren't against the wall. Their backs were against the wall seven days prior to that game when they were playing the Houston Texans. And they were playing Brock Osweiler, the same Brock Osweiler that got pulled on Sunday against the 2-11 and Jacksonville Jaguars, who, side note, also beat us this season. One of their two wins is against us. And Brock Osweiler got pulled as the Houston Texans trailed the Jacksonville Jaguars by 13 points. Tom Savage replaced Brock Osweiler and the Houston Texans battle back to beat the Jacksonville Jaguars, who once again beat us. Both those teams actually hold winning streaks against us, multiple game winning streaks against us, dating back to last season. And it was announced yesterday that Tom Savage will be starting for the Houston Texans next week. So the man who came into our building two weeks ago in a must-win regular season game for both teams, basically a playoff game, where you got two teams battling for sole possession of first place in week 14, got benched the next week against a 2-11 team, and lost his starting job for week 16. That same very quarterback, two weeks ago, came into our building and beat us. That's the game where our backs were against the wall. Not this week. Not against Minnesota when we need a hundred other things to happen to make the playoffs. Our backs weren't against the wall. We responded. We played good. The defense played great. The offensive line played great with three rookies on it. We ran the football. Frank Gore got to 100 yards. I mean, we played a really good football game. But our backs were not against the wall. And the fact that people were complaining that the Jaguars blew the game to the Texans and the fact that people were complaining that the Chiefs blew the game to the Titans the reason we don't control our own destiny is because we're 2-3 and three in the worst division in football. Because we lost to the Jacksonville Jaguars and we lost to the Houston Texans who's quarterbacked by Brock Osweiler twice this season. We're 0-3 against Brock Osweiler and Blake Bortles. We're 0-3 against the Texans and the Jaguars. We really lost last week to Brock Osweiler at home. The next week, he gets benched for Tom Savage against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Every team in the NFL controls their own destiny week one. Because week one, everybody's zero and zero. When you go two and three in the worst division in football with one of, if not the best quarterbacks in football, you don't deserve to control your own destiny. And we did control it up until week 14 when the Houston Texans came into our building we were battling for sole possession of first place at home, and we couldn't deliver. We had all the opportunities in the world to control our own destiny far longer than we should have been. Because honestly, did this team play well enough in the first 13 weeks to have the opportunity to control their own destiny in week 14? I don't think so. But because the division is so incredibly bad, we did have that opportunity, and we blew it. And just the fact that the Indianapolis media is trying to push this narrative that this team responds so well with their backs against the wall. They went out to Minnesota. It was them against the world. They rallied around their head coach. They fought for Chuck. They went out there and they played this great game. They went out. They played a great game. Honest to God, that might be the best game I've seen them play under Pagano. But at the same time, one week ago when our backs actually were against the wall and we went up against the Houston Texans in a battle for sole possession of first place in the AFC South, that game could be considered one of the worst games, if not the worst game, under Pagano. He had his team completely unprepared for, in his words, a quote-unquote playoff game against a team that's 6-6, six and six, against a team whose quarterback gets benched the next week against a team who's 2-11. and 11. And that quarterback who came into our building two weeks ago isn't even going to start week 16 because he's benched for Tom Savage. He's legit benched for a guy with the last name Savage. You know what a loser you need to be to be benched for a guy with the last name Savage? And the fact that he came into our building two weeks ago and beat us is just a disgrace. And you got the Indianapolis media. I hate these dudes at the Indy Star. 
They're trying everything they can to basically save this man's job. These guys are just so friggin' stupid. It doesn't make any sense to me. Like, you have a situation where you have all this power. You have all these people reading your articles. You have all these people listening to you. Why would you use your power to bring these morons back? We're 7-7 seven and seven with the win against the Jets, with the win against the Vikings. We're 7-7. Seven and seven. We're a 500 football team. It's like the Indianapolis media wants Ryan Gritchen and Chuck Pagano to be back in 2017. If these guys are back in 2017, I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. Because guess what? You're going to see a lot more games like you saw against the Texans than you just saw against the Vikings or that you saw against the Jets. There's going to be a lot more of those games than these games. And I'm telling you, we're going to be sitting here a year from now Floating around 500, questioning if we're going to make the playoffs. Andrew Luck's going to be one of the most hit quarterbacks, if not the most hit quarterback in the National Football League. We're going to be sitting here talking about will these guys get fired in 2018, not will these guys make the playoffs. It'll be the same thing that I told you guys last year that would happen this year again next year. I can't do it again. I cannot go through this again in 2017. We're two weeks away from Jim Irsay having a very big yet very easy decision to make. Will he screw it up again? God, I hope not, but I'm starting to think that because honestly, that's what I see happening. All that this win does against the Minnesota Vikings is it gives Jim Mercy a reason to bring these guys back. It gives them a game to look at, to point at, and to show that Pagano is capable of running the football. And we are capable of making stops on third down. And we are capable of stopping a good running back like Adrian Peterson. And we are capable of protecting our quarterback against one of the top five defensive lines and front sevens in the National Football League. And we're going to be sitting here a year from now, just like we were this time last year. And I was telling you how if they were back on January 4th, 2016, We'd be sitting here a year from then, which is now today, where we're sitting here at 7-7, seven and seven, two weeks left before we miss the playoffs. We're going to be doing it again in 2018 if these guys are back on January 2nd, 2017. Ursay has to get on the same page with the...